We're getting less and less in this room, eh? Uh, so, your excellencies, still in the room. Uh, let me tell you that, and ladies and gentlemen, of our creative and loving and dreaming community in this country, I want to tell you that I feel very honored that I'm with you. And when Mr. Michalos invited us and said, listen, you practitioners of the Greek community and industry, we have an important meeting which we are organizing as our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We are inviting the ambassadors of countries and we're creating the ambassador's circle. We want you to come and enrich the perception these ambassadors are having for our country. We want you to come and create not a better insight only, but if possible, trigger a foresight for them, so that when they live in this country, they enjoy and feel at home. And when they report to their home countries, they reflect the true character and they can reflect the true invitation of this country for creative cooperation. Myself, I've been, I assume, invited here as an old man of our shipping community. I feel as a seafarer, born in the sea, grown up in the sea, and I talk with the experiences of our cross oceans, open sea, salty seas, shipping industry, but also with the experiences of a local salesman, sail, sailor, who sails the coast and the islands. So I talk, and I will try to share experiences with you, both as a person that served the international transportation, but also as a local native who feels and understands our sea waters. I want to tell you that as a person who was privileged to work in our international shipping, I want to share with you something which I think is very important for our discussion. The thing is that we, when we travel abroad to offer the service of shipping transportation, we meet people, we meet countries, we meet states, we meet businesses, we meet communities, and create, create agreements, create transactions. The feeling is, I would like to convey and share with you, is that in my 40 years in the shipping community, we had transactions and businesses that succeeded and businesses that failed. The one that succeeded, those that were successful, were the ones who were truly based on a good understanding of the two parties, a true communication and cooperation. They were based on trust. They were based on a common dream and a common vision, which created a common good result and a common reward. I'm saying that because now in our country that we are at this turning point which has been so well described, the feeling I want to convey is that we are looking forward in presenting who we are, what are the talents of this country and the skills and the weaknesses asking you as representatives of your countries, as the, the arms and the 
veins and the channels with which we communicate with your people and businesses and states to know exactly what we are, convey the message to your creative businesses, and trigger them if they think that here is a good partner to come and respond to the invitation and create positive value. So in very short, I will not go into fact, facts and figures. I mean, we've gone through that. As international shipping, you know that shipping is carrying 90% of the world cargo. Without shipping, we say the world will freeze or the world would starve. So this international shipping is serving the world, all of our countries. The international shipping in the pro-Lehman period went into a very flourishing and good results zone of its life. In the post-Lehman period, international shipping is under very high stress. It's going through a difficult time because in the good period, many ships were built, overcapacity of tonnage was created, more than the, car than the cargoes were needing, and now the international shipping community is in high stress. I want to say what is happening with the Greek shipping community working in the international domain. The Greek shipping community is exhibiting a very interesting commitment, a resistance, and a desire to stick and continue serving the world as a transporter. So, the Greek shipping community is the largest in the world. It's a community that is continuing growth, and growth is not only in size, is in quality of good, better ships, better management, better people, better training, for a service which is designed to be eco-friendly, punctual, and effective. So this is what we are trying to do. This is actually the skill we have developed. And this is actually the skill that is inviting international entrepreneurship to come and join forces with us for even a better result. So this is what is happening in the open sea shipping. In the coastal blue waters of the Aegean, what is happening is related to hospitality and just get in a boat. I would suggest you get your backpack and go deck so you enjoy the breeze, you enjoy the duration of the slow steaming ship and just feel this archipelagos and you will understand. Also, just take an afternoon and go to Sunion, to the Temple of Poseidon, and just see the sunset and feel the breeze. So you will understand what is the sea for this country and what is the sea hospitality for this country, which you, your people may be interested. Talking about the sea, I think I will get away from the now and the big businesses. Going back, Shipping in this country was the stimulator of our cosmopolitan presence. We were very active during war times. We were very active during Ottoman occupation because we were carrying the cargoes of the Ottoman Empire in Russia. And going back and back and back, I think it's worthwhile to go in the very old times four, five, six thousand years ago, and reply to the question, why did the Greeks become seafarers? Why have they developed this skill and the gene? It's not a theory, it's just thoughts. Probably because the country was very small, and very poor, and very rocky. Probably, and not enough 
for the expanding population of the old Greek times. Probably because the country was experiencing invasions from the north and the east and the west and pressures that made the Greeks need, needing to go and find a refuge somewhere else. Probably it was the light, this clear light which gives the local people a long view to the horizon. And because they see long into the horizon, they have the dream to go at the end of the horizon and travel. Probably it was the islands which made it easy because we did not have to cross an ocean. We just go from Faliro to Egina to Poros and Bosporos and the Black Sea, but gradually. All this easiness and probably geomorphological purposes that created the drive of the Greeks to the sea, I think have affected totally and completely what has Greece become. Actually, the word Plutus, which means wealth, wealth is Plutus, is coming from the word plus. And plus is the sail, plus is the passage of the ship. And Plutus is the product of the sea, the return of the seafarer. That is the wealth. And it is not only material wealth, it is spiritual wealth, experienced wealth. It is the wealth that made, I think, all of us gradually to understand the world, to connect with other cities, to understand civilizations, to develop trade. And by this openness and gradual cosmopolitanism, develop free thinking and open mind and philosophy and set the foundations of, of, a, of a political system that respected the freedom and created democracy. So for us, the people of the sea, the sea is the driver and the generator of what we are, what created our philosophy, our culture, our genes. And I think that this culture and those genes are the ones which your countrymen, your businessmen, your investors will have to consider before coming here. I will touch upon, I mean, everything was said about the location, about, but let me say a few things about the location. The location is the tip of Europe. It is between Italy and Turkey. The Aegean is the water, which for some people it is a separator. The sea separates the continents. For the Greeks, for Jason, who took the Argo 4,000 years ago, the sea was the bridge. So this tip of Europe and the seas around are the bridging of the east and the west, are the bridging of the Western Christianity and the Eastern Islamic world, are the middle of the Pope and the Patriarch and Moscow, the Orthodoxy, are the closest tip for Asian cargoes, fastest and cheapest, is the place through which Israel, Egypt, Turkey can move people and cargoes and culture to the West. So it's very central. It is a location which is central. And this central location, together with this philosophy, has created another thing which I think is important to put it on the table now. Have you thought what is the Olympic Games? What was the Olympic Games? It was cities, Thieva and Sparta and Athens, fighting, killing each other, antagonizing, 
being different. But somebody said, instead of killing each other, why don't we go to Olympia and run and play and have joy? So they went to Olympia, they had run and play and joy and game. And on Monday they said, why on earth are, were we fighting? So the Olympic Games, the Olympic spirit, the Olympic truce was this small trick, somebody thought, to cultivate peace and cultivate friendship and cultivate cooperation. And I'm mentioning that because Greece located just one hour from Turkey, Istanbul, Israel, one hour from the west, three hours from Dubai, Bahrain, three hours from Copenhagen. This central point has got this culture and this trick and this training of becoming a hub where probably, and we have experienced it with some ambassadors from the Arab world, we can become a center talking about peace in our zone, talking about cooperation in our zone, talking about creativity in our zone. So location is part of the character of Greece. We are proposing and suggesting to our partners. The genes in the people are the genes of openness, cosmopolitanism. Alexander, was the, the great, was one of us. Homer was one of us. These people who open up the world, not as conquerors, not as fighters, but as globalizers and synthesizers. It's interesting, if you go in the Hellenistic towns, in the Ionian Turkish coast, up to Africa, in the, in the cities you will see a theater, a gymnasium, a library, a parliament, and a temple. You will not see big defense walls. You will not see beautiful, luxurious palaces. You will see these elements of spiritual connection among the people. So that's what we are. That's what we are trying to offer. That's the invitation. If these things appeal, and these talents and genes in the genes can be combined what your countries will bring from home for a joint activity and joint value added, I think this is something interesting to explore further. I will have to end, but before ending, I will want to share with you some, some feeling which you may find romantic or extreme. We talk about foreign direct investment. We talked about we talk about uh, corporations and uh, developing businesses, but we are never happy. Things are very slow. We are not effective, and we all ask ourselves why. We say it's the legal system, it's the tax confusion, it is the bureaucracy. It is, of course, these things are not as good as they can be. But I want to remind you, and you know that, that the creators of the world, the leaders and the entrepreneur, created businesses in the middle of the jungles, in the middles of the deserts, in the barren sea in the Arctic. Oh, come on. The problem of tax non-clarity cannot be as big to prevent partnerships. What prevents partnerships, I think, is this disease of the last 20 years of our economic behavior, which is making us talk primarily on financial fundamentals. We talk about IRR and EBITDA and return on investment and balance sheets. We have excellent people, smart people, educated people, value people who come as fund managers, as financial institutions, who come as potential partners. But very rarely 
our discussion with them goes to the fundamentals. I want to see this man who had a dream to make a factory, and I want to make a bigger factory with him. I want to go in this hotel, which is beautiful, and I want to get a joint venture to make another one. The discussions we are making for the developing of the businesses is exhausted in what we say financial due diligence. We don't as much go into the synergic, conceptual, intangible due diligence to create what we need to create. So, ending up, I would like to tell you that you are in a friendly country. This country and our ministry considers you very valuable presences and want to give you a good experience from your years here. Walk around, meet the Greeks, eat together, understand, and hopefully, together with this better understanding of ourselves and our cultures, we can create good things which create a better world. Thank you very much. So, thank you all very much for your attention. You're all invited to our cocktail reception at the adjacent room. Thank you very much.